Convention on the Reduction of Statelessness, done at New York on 30 August 1961, entry into force, 13 December 1975. The contracting states, acting in pursuance of Resolution 896, 9, adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations on 4 December 1954, considering it desirable to reduce statelessness by international agreement, have agreed as follows, Article 1, 1. A contracting state shall grant its nationality to a person born in its territory who would otherwise be stateless. Such nationality shall be granted, a, at birth, by operation of law, or, b, upon an application being lodged with the appropriate authority, by or on behalf of the person concerned, in the manner prescribed by the national law. Subject to the provisions of paragraph 2 of this article, no such application may be rejected. A contracting state which provides for the grant of its nationality in accordance with subparagraph b, of this paragraph may also provide for the grant of its nationality by operation of law at such agent subject to such conditions as may be prescribed by the national law. 2. A contracting state may make the grant of its nationality in accordance with subparagraph b of paragraph 1 of this article subject to one or more of the following conditions. a. That the application is lodged during a period, fixed by the contracting state, beginning not later than at the age of 18 years and ending not earlier than at the age of 21 years, so, however, that the person concerned shall be allowed at least one year during which he may himself make the application without having to obtain legal authorization to do so. b that the person concerned has habitually resided in the territory of the contracting state for such period as may be fixed by that state. Not exceeding five years immediately preceding the lodging of the application nor ten years in all. c. That the person concerned has neither been convicted of an offence against national security nor has been sentenced to imprisonment for a term of five years or more on a criminal charge. d that the person concerned has always been stateless. 3. Notwithstanding the provisions of paragraphs 1, b, and 2 of this article, a child born in wedlock in the territory of a contracting state, whose mother has the nationality of that state, shall acquire at birth that nationality if it otherwise would be stateless. 4. A contracting state shall grant its nationality to a person who would otherwise be stateless and who is unable to acquire the nationality of the contracting state in whose territory he was born because he had passed the age for lodging his application or has not fulfilled the required residence conditions, if the nationality of one of his parents at the time of the person's birth was that of the contracting state first above mentioned. If his parents did not possess the same nationality at the time of his birth, the question whether the nationality of the person concerned should follow that of the father or that of the mother shall be determined by the national law of such contracting state. If application for such nationality is required, the application shall be made to the appropriate authority by or on behalf of the applicant in the manner prescribed by the national law. Subject to the provisions of paragraph 5 of this article, such application shall not be refused. 5. The contracting state may make the grant of its nationality in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 4 of this article subject to one or more of the following conditions. a. That the application is lodged before the applicant reaches an age, being not less than 23 years, fixed by the contracting state b. That the person concerned has habitually resided in the territory of the contracting state for such period immediately preceding the lodging of the application, not exceeding three years, as may be fixed by that state. c. That the person concerned has always been stateless. Article 2. A foundling found in the territory of a contracting state shall, in the absence or proof to the contrary, be considered to have been born within that territory of parents possessing the nationality of that state. Article 3. 
for the purpose of determining the obligations of contracting states under this convention, birth on a ship or in an aircraft shall be deemed to have taken place in the territory of the state whose flag the ship flies or in the territory of the state in which the aircraft is registered, as the case may be. Article 4, 1. A contracting state shall grant its nationality to a person, not born in the territory of a contracting state, who would otherwise be stateless, if the nationality of one of his parents at the time of the person's birth was that of that state. If his parents did not possess the same nationality at the time of his birth, the question whether the nationality of the person concerned should follow that of the father or that of the mother shall be determined by the national law of such contracting state. Nationality granted in accordance with the provisions of this paragraph shall be granted, a, at birth, by operation of law, or, b, upon an application being lodged with the appropriate authority, by or on behalf of the person concerned, in the manner prescribed by the national law. Subject to the provisions of paragraph 2 of this article, no such application may be rejected. 2. A contracting state may make the grant of its nationality in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 1 of this article subject to one or more of the following conditions. a. That the application is lodged before the applicant reaches an age, being not less than 23 years, fixed by the contracting state. b. That the person concerned has habitually resided in the territory of the contracting state for such period immediately preceding the lodging of the application, not exceeding three years, as may be fixed by that state. c. That the person concerned has not been convicted of an offence against national security. d. That the person concerned has always been stateless. Article 5, 1. If the law of a contracting state entails loss of nationality as a consequence of any change in the personal status of a person such as marriage, termination of marriage, legitimation, recognition or adoption, such loss shall be conditional upon possession or acquisition of another nationality. 2. If, under the law of a contracting state, a child born out of wedlock loses the nationality of that state in consequence of a recognition of affiliation, he shall be given an opportunity to recover that nationality by written application to the appropriate authority, and the conditions governing such application shall not be more rigorous than those laid down in paragraph 2 of Article 1 of this Convention. Article 6 if the law of a contracting state provides for loss of its nationality by a person's spouse or children as a consequence of that person losing or being deprived of that nationality, such loss shall be conditional upon their possession or acquisition of another nationality. Article 7, 1. A. If the law of a contracting state permits renunciation of nationality, such renunciation shall not result in loss of nationality unless the person concerned possesses or acquires another nationality. b. The provisions of subparagraph a of this paragraph shall not apply where their application would be inconsistent with the principles stated in Articles 13 and 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights approved on the 10th of December 1948 by the General Assembly of the United Nations. 2. A national of a contracting state who seeks naturalization in a foreign country shall not lose his nationality unless he acquires or has been accorded assurance of acquiring the nationality of that foreign country. 3. Subject to the provisions of paragraphs 4 and 5 of this article, a national of a contracting state shall not lose his nationality, so as to become stateless, on the ground of departure, residence abroad failure to register or on any similar ground. 4. A naturalized person may lose his nationality on account of residence abroad for a period, not less than seven consecutive years, specified by the law of the contracting state concerned if he fails to declare to the appropriate authority his intention to retain his nationality. 5. In the case of a national of a contracting state, born outside its territory, 
the law of that state may make the retention of its nationality after the expiry of one year from his attaining his majority conditional upon residence at that time in the territory of the state or registration with the appropriate authority. 6. Except in the circumstances mentioned in this article, a person shall not lose the nationality of a contracting state, if such loss would render him stateless, notwithstanding that such loss is not expressly prohibited by any other provision of this convention. Article 8, 1. A contracting state shall not deprive a person of its nationality if such deprivation would render him stateless. 2. Notwithstanding the provisions of paragraph 1 of this article, a person may be deprived of the nationality of a contracting state, a, in the circumstances in which, under paragraphs 4 and 5 of article 7, it is permissible that a person should lose his nationality, b, where the nationality has been obtained by misrepresentation or fraud. 3. Notwithstanding the provisions of paragraph 1 of this article, a contracting state may retain the right to deprive a person of his nationality, if at the time of signature, ratification or accession it specifies its retention of such right on one or more of the following grounds, being grounds existing in its national law at that time. a. That, inconsistently with his duty of loyalty to the contracting state, the person i. has in disregard of an express prohibition by the contracting state rendered or continued to render services to, or received or continued to receive emoluments from, another state, or 2. has conducted himself in a manner seriously prejudicial to the vital interests of the state, b. that the person has taken an oath, or made a formal declaration, of allegiance to another state, or given definite evidence of his determination to repudiate his allegiance to the contracting state. 4. A contracting state shall not exercise a power of deprivation permitted by paragraphs 2 or 3 of this article except in accordance with law, which shall provide for the person concerned the rights to a fair hearing by a court or other independent body. Article 9. A contracting state may not deprive any person or group of persons of their nationality on racial, ethnic, religious or political grounds. Article 10, 1. Every treaty between contracting states providing for the transfer of territory shall include provisions designed to secure that no person shall become stateless as a result of the transfer. A contracting state shall use its best endeavors to secure that any such treaty made by it with a state which is not a party to this convention includes such provisions. 2. In the absence of such provisions a contracting state to which territory is transferred or which otherwise acquires territory shall confer its nationality on such persons as would otherwise become stateless as a result of the transfer or acquisition. Article 11, the contracting states shall promote the establishment within the framework of the United Nations, as soon as may be after the deposit of the sixth instrument of ratification or accession, of a body to which a person claiming the benefit of this convention may apply for the examination of his claim and for assistance in presenting it to the appropriate authority. Article 12, 1. In relation to a contracting state which does not in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 1 of Article 1 or of Article 4 of this Convention, grant its nationality at birth by operation of law, the provisions of paragraph 1 of Article 1 or of Article 4, as the case may be, shall apply to persons born before as well as to persons born after the entry into force of this Convention. 2. The provisions of paragraph 4 of Article 1 of this Convention shall apply to persons born before as well as to persons born after its entry into force. 3. The provisions of Article 2 of this Convention shall apply only to foundlings found in the territory of a contracting state after the entry into force of the Convention for that state. Article 13. This convention shall not be construed as affecting any provisions more conducive to the reduction of statelessness which may be contained in the law of any contracting state now or hereafter in force, or may be contained in any other convention, 
treaty or agreement now or hereafter in force between two or more contracting states. Article 14. Any dispute between contracting states concerning the interpretation or application of this convention which cannot be settled by other means shall be submitted to the International Court of Justice at the request of any one of the parties to the dispute. Article 15. 1. This convention shall apply in all that non-self-governing, trust, colonial and other non-metropolitan territories for the international relations of which any contracting state is responsible the contracting state concerned shall, subject to the provisions of paragraph 2 of this article, at the time of signature, ratification or accession, declare the non-metropolitan territory or territories to which the convention shall apply ipso facto as a result of such signature, ratification or accession. 2. In any case in which, for the purpose of nationality, a non-metropolitan territory is not treated as one with the metropolitan territory, or in any case in which the previous consent of a non-metropolitan territory is required by the constitutional laws or practices of the contracting state or if the non-metropolitan territory for the application of the convention to that territory, the contracting state shall endeavor to secure the needed consent of the non-metropolitan territory within the period of 12 months from the date of signature of the convention by that contracting state and when such consent has been obtained the contracting state shall notify the Secretary-General of the United Nations. This convention shall apply to the territory or territories named in such notification from the date of its receipt by the Secretary-General. 3. After the expiry of the 12-month period mentioned in paragraph 2 of this article, the contracting states concerned shall inform the Secretary-General of the results of the consultations with those non-metropolitan territories for whose international relations they are responsible and whose consent to the application of this convention may have been withheld. Article 16. 1. This convention shall be open for signature at the headquarters of the United Nations from 30 August 1961 to 31 May 1962. 2. This convention shall be open for signature on behalf of a. Any state member of the United Nations, b. Any other state invited to attend the United Nations Conference on the Elimination or Reduction of Future Statelessness, c. Any state to which an invitation to sign or to accede may be addressed by the General Assembly of the United Nations. 3. This convention shall be ratified and the instruments of ratification shall be deposited with the Secretary-General of the United Nations. 4. This convention shall be open for accession by the states referred to in paragraph 2 of this article. Accession shall be effected by the deposit of an instrument of accession with the Secretary-General of the United Nations. Article 17. 1. At the time of signature, ratification or accession any state may make a reservation in respect of Articles 11, 14 or 15. 2. No other reservations to this convention shall be admissible. Article 18. 1. This convention shall enter into force two years after the date of the deposit of the sixth instrument of ratification or accession. 2. For each state ratifying or acceding to this convention after the deposit of the sixth instrument of ratification or accession, it shall enter into force on the ninetieth day after the deposit by such state of its instrument of ratification or accession or on the date on which this convention enters into force in accordance with the provisions of paragraph 1 of this article, whichever is the later. Article 19. 1. Any contracting state may denounce this convention at any time by a written notification addressed to the Secretary-General of the United Nations. Such denunciation shall take effect for the contracting state concerned one year after the date of its receipt by the Secretary-General. 2. In cases where, in accordance with the provisions of Article 15, this convention has become applicable to a non-metropolitan territory of a contracting state, that state may at any time thereafter, with the consent of the territory concerned, 
give notice to the Secretary General of the United Nations denouncing this convention separately in respect of that territory. The denunciation shall take effect one year after the date of the receipt of such notice by the Secretary General, who shall notify all other contracting states of such notice and the date of receipt thereof. Article 20. 1. The Secretary General of the United Nations shall notify all members of the United Nations and the non member states referred to in Article 16 of the following particulars. a. Signatures ratifications and accessions under Article 16. b. Reservations under Article 17. c. The date upon which this convention enters into force in pursuance of Article 18. d. Denunciations under Article 19. 2. The Secretary-General of the United Nations shall after the deposit of the sixth instrument of ratification or accession at the latest, bring to the attention of the General Assembly the question of the establishment, in accordance with Article 11, of such a body as therein mentioned. Article 21. This convention shall be registered by the Secretary-General of the United Nations on the date of its entry into force. In witness whereof the undersigned plenipotentiaries have signed this convention. Done at New York, this 30th day of August, 1961, in a single copy, of which the Chinese, English, French, Russian and Spanish texts are equally authentic and which shall be deposited in the archives of the United Nations, and certified copies of which shall be delivered by the Secretary General of the United Nations to all members of the United Nations and to the non-member states referred to in Article 16 of this Convention.